What's up, Perfect Leverage Golfers? Welcome to the channel and welcome to Tacoma, Washington, or just outside of it, as we are playing the host course of the 2015 US Open. We are at Chambers Bay. Really pumped to get out here. This is one of the most highly rated public courses. I'm sure a lot of you remember that 2015 US Open. We will be playing from the backsided box, seeing if we can get underneath 90, closer to 85 today. Let's go get it. We got Chambers Bay all day long, baby. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Alan with you guys. We are out at Chambers Bay, as you heard in the intro. I'm really pumped about this. Things about this course, though, it is very link style. There's not a lot of actual rough. It's more of that long kind of stringy fescue that we've got in front of us. So that's going to be kind of the struggle today when it comes to getting into the fairway and then giving us a chance at some very difficult looking greens, if I'm being completely honest. So that's what we've got. We're playing the Navy box, about 71, 7,200 yards. So it is the back tee box. Not quite, obviously, the US Open distances, but it should be pretty fun. We will also be starting on the back nine. So we'll kick off things with hole number 10. Should be a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's go have a good day. Oh, right in it. That's not where you want to be. We'll see on that one. I think it's a little left. It says it's like the 10 handicap, but I don't. You don't believe it? <laughs> Not at all. Well, it doesn't help when I top a bunker shot right into the middle of the bank, but. Yeah, warm up hole, right? Yeah, exactly. First 36 shots are practice, right? A lot of, a lot of golf to play. <laughs> up for the bunker mayhem. Hole 11 is a big par for 457 yards. There's a big mound out in the middle of the fairway. That's going to be used as the target aiming line. And they have a bunch of trash bunkers on the right-hand side you have to carry to get onto what is a very undulated green. See how it goes. Oh, we're having fun with bunkers today. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I uh, didn't mention it all at the beginning, but my driver that I've been using has a crack in the club face we learned when we were in San Diego. So we're using a rental driver um, and it was a little squirrely on the range and I imagine it might be a little squirrely out here too. Uh, we got about 150 though, I got nine iron. Looks like you want to just be over the top of this mound you're about to see on the left hand side. Oh, it's got a lot of draw. Okay, should be a good spot to chip from at least. Oh, right at the end. Hole number 12 is named the Narrows, as it is an uphill drivable par 4, only playing 281 yards, but it is the narrowest hole on the golf course. Of course, we didn't come all this way to lay up, so we will be challenging the green and hopefully finding a way to get something back. We gotta kinda get the screws on. Big slice here, but we ended up kinda close towards pin high, going straight over to the green. I'm not gonna listen to the ball, maybe not even see most of the swing. Got about 65 yards we need to hit this ball. Oh, it's just not good. All right, up and down. Not the smoothest start. <laughs> 
but we can pick it up. Biggest key today is just to make sure we're having fun. Course like this, may not ever get a chance to play it again. Using a driver, a driver that's a rental. Just need to have a little bit of fun. Let's go. Thank you. Go, Sit, I, stay. Nicely done. Thank you. Did you find your ball up there? Yeah, I did. Okay, perfect. Ooh, no turn. Hole 13, nicknamed Eagle Eye, introduces our first par 5, which is a dog leg to the right. It's also the highest point of elevation here at Chambers Bay. The fairway is definitely wide without a question, but a tee shot on the right side will reduce the length of approach on a second shot. So we got to stay a little bit left and hopefully have an opportunity to try to get on in two. Pretty much right? Stay left in your five. Is that on the left side of the hill or right? It kind of came right over the middle of it. All right, right side collection area. Not a lot of draw on that. Thank you. sloppy but we're putting it together short games definitely showing up as we head to hole 14 very dramatic downhill par 4 where you can decide to play aggressive try to carry some of the bunkerage or play something a little bit over towards the right giving you a long second shot in got to figure out driver let's hit it straight hopefully <laughs> let's get on with it Gotta figure out the rental driver. Oh, chunk. Just give me a chip. Okay. Oh, sit. A little too much jazz on that. After what already feels like forever, we finally get to our first par three on the course. It's a short one playing from an elevated tee box. It's like 160 playing down to 145. Also really interesting, the fur that you see in the distance, that's the only tree actually on the golf course property and rightfully so, the hole is named Lone Fur. Number 16 comes in contact, at least somewhat, with the train tracks that border along the long side of this golf course, but it's a gentle curve to the right with a fairway that slopes left to right. So we're trying to take something a little less than driver with three wood, hopefully putting something up the left side so it trickles down in the middle of the fairway. Let's go. Whoa. I lost my top of my three wood. Jeez. I have no idea where that ended up, but this is starting to really get to me not being able to get off the tee box. I had one good drive, one good iron shot there in the part three. The tee box game is getting me mentally. It's tough, rental driver, tried to pull three wood, tried to play it low, topped it. Makes murder decisions, need to regain. We're really not, we're really not doing too bad comparatively to score, it's just not fun when you don't see the ball go the way you want it to go. It's tough scenes. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, really nicely done, man. Thank you, thank you. If only we could get off the tee box. What a Jekyll and Hyde round so far. <laughs> but look at that. I mean, this is a very unique experience. I imagine it's very Bandon Dunes-esque. Beautiful. Thank you. That was an adventurous way to play that hole. 
Full 17 offers two different types of T-Boxes. We'll be playing in the bottom right-hand ones that you see on the flyover. We got five iron out for it. It's a pretty back pin and we're into the win. This is hopefully find something that can stick onto the green. Oh, cover. It's hit really well. I can see a sand splash. Gotta be cute here. Got a hill that we need to use to kind of creep this ball down towards the pin. Catch that slope. Oh yeah, nicely done. I have a lot right. of people that come out game. Sweet. Oh. <laughs> And to finish off the front nine, playing hole 18, it's a par 5, 541. The pro box is about 600 yards, but it's severely back from where we're teeing off from. We have a quarry little line on the right, which is what those buildings are. But the interesting thing about this opening shot is that there's bunkers, left bunkers, right bunkers all over the place. So we did try to find a fairway and hopefully have a look in to get on it too. Catch it. Oh, that's perfect. Catch nice. it. Oh, sick. Yanked it. Oh, good bounce. Oh, what a bounce. Come on. Would have been the right club, just kind of yanked it a little bit. We'll take it. Half it down for birdie. Come on. Like burnt out or too? No, like, like they are now just long. Yeah, you know, ah, too tight. much. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Too hard. Too high. And way too, too hard. High. Holy, too that's hard. not good. Thanks. Little mid round nine update. <laughs> this course is pretty freaking cool. And actually, surprisingly enough, we've missed out on all of this tall fescue grass on the right and left. Um, it's just they're all on hills and slopes and they're very steep. So if you get up in one, it looks like it's just going to kick back down towards the fairway. Um, squirrely opening, but rental driver, we're figuring it out and pretty solid front nine, all things told. It's just one of those things that I feel like we could be doing a lot better if we just hit driver a little bit better. But such is life. Whole 10 coming up, get into the back nine. Conditions are pure, a lot of fun. Sub down if you have not done so. Let's enjoy the back nine finish strong hole 10 or hole one the opening hole is a long but pretty straightforward par four but it definitely sets a bit of a tone for what this nine is going to look like going straight over to the puget sound we have to crest an opening hill and then hopefully have a look into this pretty tucked green on the left side All right, a little hidden hope here. We did not put the right club on this. It's a putt, but good luck, have fun. Somebody called my house. And, uh, well, that is just a really bad putt. So he was trying to, oh, wait. Turn, turn. Yeah. 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 That is so bad. <laughs> Let's go. Very, very enjoyable. Yeah, Thank you. Hole number two at Chambers Bay is a 395 yard par four playing through a bunch of dunes, not just off the tee box, but there's also some that really guard this green. If we get something up the right side of the fairway, we should have a better look at this green, and that's going to be the goal. Let's go. Yeah, for those that are returning from watching the San Diego videos, you guys are probably sitting here wondering why I'm not living up to my mantra back then, which was I was hitting these slices, these push fades, and I said if I hit one bad squirrely shot with the driver, I'm just going to hit three wood all day. So why am I not doing that now? Well, when I was in San Diego, I did get fit, and we're going to be getting a stealth two, which is what this rental is. Not the same shaft, so I probably should just hit three wood and play smart, but we're all egotistical when we golf. Find it, hit it again. There you go. 
keep turning a little bit for yeah, me. Yeah. Please. There Sweet. I'll take that. I will absolutely take that. Oh yeah. Ooh, it was a little saucy. A little saucy. It's fine. I'll take that. Thank you. Big save. Hole number three is a pretty short par three, only playing about mid 160s or so. There's a giant kick slope on the right though, and you'll kind of see how often the green likes to kick everything from right to left, even if you don't use that mound. So if we miss right, we're good. That actually may be the goal with this mid pin. Give me that same bounce. Shot. Keep coming. Okay. <laughs> Took a little inspiration that's, that's, from you there, Brad. That's the play. That's the play for sure. Oh, hit the ball, Alan. Get up, get up. Such a good line. Yep. You animal. How does that not turn even a slight bit? Ah. It's okay, first three putt of the day. Hole four, mid 500s for a par five, and it slopes pretty much uphill the entire way. First shot into this fairway needs to avoid the bunkers on the right-hand side. If we get to the left side of the fairway, it will kick over towards the right. Second shot is a very covered green up the hill, so two good shots required if we're trying to make anything close to under par. Not too average there. Yeah. <laughs> it's gloomy. You're good to me, baby. Got it. Sweet. Shot. Man, you eliminate the bunker madness on the first hole and some bad drives with the rental driver. We're playing real well. It's a great shot right there. Should have a look at the putt at Eagle. That pin was super tucked. Just really no angle to go at it. So play for the build of green, the big seven wood. Looks like it lined it nicely. I'm really enjoying it. I know that a couple holes back we were saying, boy, our tee box game's really getting in our head, but our poach game's been good. Our short game's been super good. Lots to be happy about on top of the fact that that's our backdrop. <laughs> Let's go. down. I don't know why I saw more right turn than that than there was. Hole number five reads as a big par four off the elevated tee box, but a lot of it does play downhill. So long straightaway drive is needed. Bunkers, of course, on the left and right make this landing space pretty narrow. Then it'll be a mid iron in for hopefully another solid hole trying to get off this bogey train. Well, watch it close. Hard to see. Yeah, I lost it when it's gotten into the line of the bunkers. Nice miss hit, Alan. Oh, no, no draw. Yeah, this plays well. It's always into the wind and it's up. Oh, go a little bit. Ah! It's almost exactly where I wanted to put that. <laughs> Jeez, Alan. That's just a bad, flat-out hole. That is not a... Hole number six is a par four that can play two different ways, either with a right tee box that sets up a dog leg or a dead on tee box that sets up a straight par four. We've got the dog leg version today playing low 400s with these mounds on the right hand side we have to be careful of. We could have been playing so much better if we just had a driver. Alright, found the golf ball, but 
big old dune in front of us. We have to go up to the left with 58. Let's get it back on the fairway. All we can do is try to get up and down for par. A couple of three putts, we're drivers. Let's finish strong, keep the energy up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Zip a little bit. Go in. Zip a little bit. All right. Keep working. Good putt. Nice it up. Thank you. Yeah, what a putt. Thank you, thank you. It's good by you, it's good by me. Thank you. Thank you. Driver is going to get one more chance here on hole number seven, along par four, where not only is the fairway wide open, but the trash bunker on the right is not super punishing. So we're going to give her one good, strong whack, and if it ends up going well, we'll keep it. If not, we'll put it away and try to finish off this round the hard way. Okay, we just, like we said at the top of the hole, just swinging hard because I just don't know what to do with driver. We're in play, lots of space over here. Not the greatest lie, obviously. It's about 175, I think. A little helping wind, but not a great stance. Take an extra club for six iron here. It's gonna be a lot, but we'll take it. This one, a little bump and runner at the 54. Oh, stop, please. No way. No way. Good touch. Hey. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't realize this is literally a foot. <laughs> My bad, boys. <laughs> Your Instagram channel doesn't need to see me. <laughs> Well, with all these push, fades, slices that we've been getting with this rental driver, we are putting it away here for this last drivable hole. It's a par five, big one, 557, up the slope the entire way. Three wood's gonna be out. It's gonna probably take two three wood shots to get there. Let's see if we can salvage this round and finish off strong. Oh, naturally. <laughs> Full hook with the three wood. Oh, if only we could get off the tee today. All right, try to give three with some redemption. Man, tee box game. So bad today. Let's see, we got like 290, so not gonna get theirs. Smooth three wood. Give us a chance, it's something. Par five things. Jesus. That ball's probably gone too. Dropping four, hitting five. 103 left or so. Jesus. <sighs> Get me out of here. Well, the wheels have absolutely fallen off, <laughs> but the good news is we do have a par three to finish. It's a really cool scenic hole, but it does play dramatically downhill. So 227 from the back box, it's gonna be playing much closer to about the 180, 170 number. Sorry for the club throw. Frustration definitely set in considering I knew we could shoot well. Let's see if we can put together one good last final hole. Sounds like green. Yeah, right in the middle. <clears throat> right in the middle. Settle, settle ball. How does that not so, keep turning? So yeah. Oh. Aw. I know. It's. Oh, that Well, they're perfectly average golfers. 
oh, that round is going to live rent free for quite some time. You know, I, I really should have just committed to playing three wood all day. Um, I think there was definitely, <laughs> I know there was definitely this little egotistical part of me that's like, oh, I'm gonna be getting a stealth two, so let me just hit this. It's the same Ventus shaft, just not extra stiff and a little bit different weight and length. And I was hitting it okay in the range, just once we got on the golf course, it just did not get underhand outside of like the three good drives we had. And those three drives kept me hitting it over and over and over again. Outside of that, our short game in the front nine and our approach game generally was actually really, really strong. Just we could not get off the tee box. And I think if we were to have just hit three wood the entirety of the day, we would have put together actually a really solid round because all my high irons were hit really well. I had a couple of good seven woods, the three woods there in the end, I had pretty much just lost full. So, you know, that is kind of what it is, but I should just commit to it it's real tough scenes um, but you know I, it looks like there will be chances to come out to Seattle in the future so I'm definitely gonna come out here and try to get some revenge um, and I think for the average golfer out there playing from either the back um, or one or two in front I think the biggest thing is you know you're not gonna get a ton of trouble it looks like when you are off left and right from the fairways um, but you do need to be really particular about reading greens because that's where it's really gonna rack up scores so all in all I had a ton of fun um, it's a really it's a huge treat to be able to come out and play courses like this so thank you guys for your support make sure you sub if you're brand new to the channel. We've got Tory Pines on the channel, both north and south. We put a couple of other marquee golf courses. So if you're looking for that and what an average golfer might shoot, make sure you go check them out. And until next time, make sure you yourself stay perfectly average. Bye-bye.